It goes without saying that Blender's compositor can do a lot. Now, I'm only gonna go over some of the things that I do on a regular basis in the compositor, but I assure you, there's so much more that can be done. First on the list is, not surprisingly, the denoiser. If you haven't seen how powerful the denoiser is, check out this before and after. This render only has four samples, yet it still cleans up pretty good. Though it works well on low sample still images, I wouldn't recommend using the denoiser on a low sample animation, or it might look like this. Now, using the denoiser is really easy. First, head to the Layer Properties tab and check the denoising data box. Second, go to the compositor. How you get to the compositor is up to you. I usually change the default timeline window into the compositor, but I know some people prefer having it on top or maybe having two compositors or three if you split the window by clicking in the upper right corner. Or maybe you want to have a compositor in its own window altogether by holding shift and then clicking and dragging the new window. Now you can put it on a second monitor or something. Anyway, now that you're in the compositor, check the use nodes box. This will add the render layers node and the composite node. In short, the render layers node is the raw 3D render that's created when you render your scene, and the composite is the final image output, essentially the image that is exported when you save out the image. So in between these nodes, we can add effects nodes to change the image, in this case, the denoiser. So go to the add menu, choose filter, denoise. If you place the node on the line between the other nodes, it'll connect automatically. Now, there are a few more connections that we need to make in this case. Connecting the denoising normal to normal and the denoising albedo to albedo. And that's it for the denoiser. Except now, before we move on, I've seen some people set this up a little differently. Instead of connecting image to image, they connect noisy image to the image input of the denoise node. And I've tested it both ways and found that the noisy image method looks bad. Color grading is the process in which a shot's color is adjusted to give it a stylized look. This is something that I rely on when I'm recreating a shot from a movie so I can match the color. Let me walk you through this process by showing you what I did in my Oh Brother Where Art Thou shot reconstruction. To adjust the color in this scene, I used the RGB Curves node. It can be found in the Compositor's Add menu under the Color sub-menu. To match the original scene, I knew I needed to warm up the color by adding red and removing blue. Notice the CRGB buttons on the node. These select which color to adjust. So, to add red, click on the R, then click in the middle of the curve and drag it closer to the upper left corner. Now switch to the blue channel by clicking B and drag that point toward the lower right corner. To finish off the scene, I added some contrast by switching to the C channel, which controls the luminance, and dragging the top point to the left to brighten the highlights, and dragging a new point in the lower left quadrant down to darken the shadows. Next up is the often overused lens dispersion. What is lens dispersion? Lens dispersion is the effect found in real camera lenses where the colors toward the edge of the image are separated due to the way different wavelengths of light pass through glass. Thusly, adding it to your virtual camera in Blender should make your scene more realistic. However, I've seen people overdo it way too much, so use it sparingly. That is, unless you want your scene to look like you used a garbage lens from the little peephole you found in your back door. Anyway, in the compositor, click the Add menu. Then choose Distort, Lens Distortion. Now, I have some color grading on here already, so I'm gonna put this node before all that, because realistically, lens effects would happen before color adjustment. Now, I'll set the dispersion to 0.01. It should just barely be noticeable. That is, unless I wanted it to look like an alien POV shot, I could crank it up and add some distortion. Okay, let's move on. Remember when I pointed out the denoising data box in the Layer Properties tab? Well, there are a few more render passes here that we can utilize in the compositor. For example, if you enable the Emission Pass by clicking here, you'll have the ability to separately manipulate just the objects that emit light, allowing you to add effects like lens dirt and these stylish light trails. Once that render pass is enabled, head back to the compositor and add the Sunbeams node as well as a Mix node. 
Here I'm using the search function to find the Sunbeams node. The Mix node is under the Color submenu. Then connect them like this and change the Mix node from Mix to Add. Increase the ray length of the Sunbeams and set the location by adjusting the unlabeled X and Y numbers here. The Sunbeams node works okay for this image render, but I suspect it would be hard to find an animation that would work well with it. Now let's add some lens dirt. Just to simplify everything here, I've removed all of the nodes except for the nodes used for the lens dirt effect. Let me break it down for you, starting with the lens dirt textures themselves. I'm using the free lens dirt overlays from actionvfx.com. I'll put a link to that in the description. I couldn't find any individual image that would work by itself, so I decided to combine Lens Dirt 13 and Lens Dirt 33. To add an image, click the Add menu, then choose Input and Image. Then click the Open Image button and find your image. To combine them, I'm using a Mix node set to Screen mode and connecting the dirt textures to the image inputs. In this case, it doesn't matter which image goes into the top input and which image goes into the bottom. Now these images are larger than my render output, so they need to be scaled down. Here I'm using the scale node because it can automatically scale them to match the render size when set up like this. The dirt texture is a bit dark, so it needs to be brightened up. There are many different ways to brighten an image in the compositor. For this, I've chosen the color ramp node. This node behaves a lot like the levels control in most image editing applications, so some of you might find it familiar. To brighten the image, just drag the white handle on the right side over towards the left side. The next node is another mix node, this time set to the color mode. Our goal here is to color the lens dirt with the color from the emission pass. Be sure to connect the image output from the color ramp into the top image input of the mix node. The bottom input, however, will need a bit more work. Connect the emission pass from your Render Layers node into a Blur node. The Blur node has a bunch of different modes, but I like the Fast Gaussian mode with relative scaling and X or Y aspect correction. I have the Blur set to 11% X and Y, but you can adjust this to your own taste. The output from the Blur node then gets connected to the lower input of the Color Mix node. Now it's time to overlay the dirt onto the image render itself. To do this, add another mix node and set it to the add mode. Connect the output of your color mix node into the lower image input and connect the image output of the render layers node into the top image input. Now, we only want the dirt to appear over the lights in the image, so connect the blurred emission pass into the FAC of the add mix node. To make the dirt a little brighter, you can add a color ramp node between the blur and mix nodes like this. Adjusting the color ramp will change the intensity of the dirt. I used a few additional techniques in my final render of this scene, which I won't be getting into in this video, but don't worry, I'll be making another compositing video in the future that will cover that, as well as a few other tricks. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out my other Blender videos as well, and feel free to leave a comment with suggestions of shots or effects you'd like to see me create in Blender.